7 o'clock. Okay, so stay with us all day. Buckle up your seatbelts. Um, like my brother Adrian said yesterday, we are going on a journey. We're taking a three-week-long road trip. Um, the title of last night's message was The Beginning of Something Better. Esther and I will be speaking today on why we need something better. So we are going to take you guys on a road trip on what's going on today. So we're gonna be looking at all the sites to be seen on this trip, and we're gonna be talking about why we need something better, okay? Please join me in a word of prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, please be with Esther and I today. Lord, we know you know what we have prepared and what we have done, and we just ask that you come now and take over. Be with our hearts and be with our minds, Lord, and help us to speak your words and not ours, and prepare the hearts of the ones that are here to receive it. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Okay, guys, I have a question for y'all. Are y'all ready? If you met someone who never knew God at all, how would you describe his character in one word? And love? Anyone from this side? Wait, what? He is the savior, right here? Kind. Kind. Those are all perfect answers. And we are going to see some verses in the Bible that talk about how God is. Okay, um, well, one of my favorite ones is Numbers 23, verse 16, and it says that God is a man of his word. Now, how do many of you don't like it when someone doesn't stay true to their word? Can I see your hands? Yes, that is one of my pet peeves. But God stays true to his word. He never changes. He keeps, he never forgets his promises. Okay, um, from last night, um, Lionel and Jared were talking about the prophecy being from Daniel, fulfilling the prophecy of the word of God. And that is just showing you that God never changes. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He stayed the same from yesterday, today, and forevermore. I am a worried person. And my mom can tell you all about it. I'm worried about many things at school, at home, everywhere. But one of the things my teacher told me at my school was that he told me to trust in God. Um, he is the one who appoints everything, and he's the one who directs everything. Amen. We have it now. Amen. Okay. We have it on now. So we can get started on why we need something better. So as some of you guys said, the adjectives that you would use to describe God is love. Did I hear patience? So we're going to look at some of the things that the people in the Bible use to describe God's character. So in Exodus 34, verse 6, it says that he is merciful, gracious, long-suffering. We have in Numbers that he is a man of his word, and that is Miss Esther's favorite one. I personally like Psalms 54, where he says that he is our helper. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times in life when we are going through things, it's so important to know that I have a father who is my helper, who I can call on and reach out to. In 2 Corinthians verse 9, chapter 9, verse 8, I'm sorry, it says that he is sufficient in grace. 
how important is that in, to us? In 1 John 4, verse 16, it says that God is love. In Galatians 5, 22, it lists all of the fruits of the Spirit. He is patient, lo is love, kindness, merciful, and all of these great things. Now, wouldn't you all love to have a friend like this? One. Mm -hmm. Um... Um, that is why the disciples loved him so much. They were so drawn to him. And they were bothered as to why he had to go. But we know that he, he told the disciples that he had signs for his near return. And everywhere Christ went, people were drawn to him. They would follow him and they would flock around him. People would walk for miles and miles and miles and travel long distances to be near Christ, just to be around him and get a piece of him. So when the disciples learned, not only of he's going away, but because at that time, the Jews taught and understood that they thought that Jesus is coming to build his temple here on earth. And they thought that he would stay here and his temple will build. So that's why they were showing him all of these other temples that were being built and knowing that theirs would be much greater because Jesus was going to build theirs. But not knowing that God had to, Jesus had to leave and come back. And so he asked them, what are the signs that we should look for for your soon returning? Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am Christ and will deceive many. Now Esther, I find that very profound that Jesus started with, take heed that no one deceives you. Anytime where I see Jesus giving a warning, I know that it's something that's actually going to happen. So the fact that he said, take heed that no one deceives you, meant that lots of people were going to be deceived, correct? Okay, read verse 5 for us. Okay, so it says again, For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. So then we see, and these are things that are going on right now. Many have come and said that I am Jesus Christ. And they have gained lots and lots of followers and people being deceived and following after them. Now, this reminds me of, I, I love children, especially small children. I love carrying babies. Now, I know that when babies are really small, they allow anybody to hold them. They will go to anybody who asks for them to hold them, correct? But then they grow to a certain stage. And they've gotten to know the people who are raising them, the people who are feeding them, and the people who are spending the most time with them. And they get to the stage where you could ask for a baby, but they will no longer come to you, correct? And that's why it's so important for us to know Christ's character. Because when we know who he is and we know his character, we cannot be deceived. People can come to us and they can ask us and tell us things, but just like the small babies, we will be in that stage, and we will refuse to go to them. Now, I'm, I was really surprised at this one. This Brazilian man who claims to be Christ has been arrested 40 times, and they banned him from Britain. Now, I don't know if you think that 40 times is not enough, but for me, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> and being banned from... A, country that so and this is actually an older article he's also brand from the United States as well as Venezuela now the man on the right his name is Henry Cristo and he is from Brazil um, he also has a large following and people do believe that he is the Christ as well as this man and he also has a large following of believing that he is the Christ. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And the definition of war says, a state of armed conflict between different nations or states or different groups within a nation state. Now, do we have those groups here in America? Okay. Groups with conflict? Yes. Okay. Can we hear, name some of those groups? Okay. ISIS. ISIS. Uh -huh. 
Anyone else? Okay. So the Taliban. What about the KKK? Yes, that's a big one right now. Exactly. Now that's just what's going on in the United States of America. We also have over 10 active wars currently going on in the world. And those are active wars. And we're only counting the ones where over a thousand people are being killed. And then we have over eight active military around the, the world as well. Now, has this always been going on? Yes? Okay, we've always had war, correct? Yes. But we have a large increase on wars now than we have in the last century, correct? So just like we learned yesterday with the book of Daniel in the Bible, prophecy is being fulfilled with Christ telling us the things that are going to take place before his second coming. I'm going to have Esther read Psalms 36 verse 9, if you guys can follow as long as well. And it says, for with you is the fountain of light. In your light we see light. And it says, and it continues, Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. And So it talks about God being the giver of life in verse 9, correct? So, so far we have learned of the different men who have come along and claimed to be Jesus. These men have been committed of murders, committed of all these different types of things, so we know from the word of God that God is the giver of life. So he is not going to be murdering people, correct? All right, so we're going to look at Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So with the wars going on, we have governments that are fighting the people. With the people that are claiming to be Jesus, we have them who are going to prison and going to jail because they are doing things against the laws of the land, correct? God is the one that puts people in places of authority, and he takes them away. Thank you. I know. Thank you. So he also tells us to follow the laws of the land, correct? So we know not to be seen from one getting into the word of God and reading and getting to know his character so that when people come to us with anything unlike his character, we will not be deceived and we will not follow those people, correct? Amen. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. So we learned about that in all the wars that are going on. Famines and earthquakes in diverse places. And I have some statistics here. Um, now, Esther, haven't there always been earthquakes? Yes. Okay. We see major ones on the news, but there's tiny ones that you may be, that may, you may not even be feeling right now. Now, I grew up in California. And everybody knows that California is where all the earthquakes happen, correct? But now we're hearing about earthquakes happening in different states, in only the United States, in different states other than California. So it says from 2004 to 2014, 18 earthquakes, there were 18 earthquakes worldwide. And that's 265% increase in the last 10 years. So in the last 10 years, we have more than doubled the number of earthquakes that we've had in the last century. In the last 10 years, we have more than doubled the number of earthquakes than in the last century. That's profound. In just the last 10 years. So God is trying to tell us something. Then 
they shall deliver you up to tribu unto tribulation and shall kill you. Sh you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, we know that it's not in every country where people are blessed enough to go to church and worship on the Sabbath as we are, right? There are many countries out there where people are killed for being Christians and killed for mentioning the name of God and things like that, correct? And this has been going on mostly forever, but we have some specific countries who are in war right now because of those things, because they are not able to mention um, the name of God. And their governments have them, you know, have these rules in place to control them and not be free to be able to do so. Um, now, in this New York Times, it says, um, the Supreme Court prohibits the Lord's Prayer and Bible reading at public school requirements. Now, I go to public school, and I know many of our young people go to public school too. And for me, it's hard because you really want to share the love of God at people at your school, but it's a public school, and you don't want to get in trouble. But what I do is I, I always pray to God that I can at least have some faith to share the love of God at the people at my school. And so I tell people about our Pathfinder Club, how we go camping, we have rallies and Bible Bowl, and that I, might, I give the teachers the great controversy so they can read about what's happening in the world and that Jesus is coming very soon to take us home, Amen. where there's no more crying, there's no more sickness, there's no more pain. We get to see our loved ones back home again. Amen. 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 Amen for sisters like sister. But unfortunately, the public school system is not allowing us to talk about God and things like that in schools, correct? They've taken out anything to do with God, anything to do with his creation and how the earth was made out of our public school systems. And in replace of that, they are putting in things like homosexuality, transgender, and all those restrooms. And this is what they are teaching our children. Now, these are signs of the end times, because not only is God being removed from these systems, but they are forcing the children to learn about these other alternative things. Second Timothy 3, verse 1 and 5, it says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, naughty, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Amen. Amen. And have we seen all of these things? Yes. Do we know anybody with any of these things? Are we any of these things? Yes. Do we have a form of godliness, but not have God at all? God said that these things would happen in his last days. People would be greedy. They would have a form of godliness, but not, nothing of God at all. Many false prophets will arise. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen? Amen. And this gospel of the kingdom should be, will be preached around the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come, Matthew 24, 14. Amen? Amen? So that's just saying that this is not at all a depressing or a scary message that you should be scared of. This is all a message that we should be excited of, Amen. excited to share with other people. Amen. Even though we know that all these things are happening, we know that they are happening because Jesus is coming back to take us home. Amen. And we no longer have to deal with all of these things. And in John 14, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be there also. Amen. Amen. So just like we talked about in the beginning of the message, we were going to take you on a little road trip to show you all the things that are going on in this world today. Now, God told us, Jesus told us that even though he is leaving, he is going to prepare a place for us, correct? Yes. And we do not have to be discouraged because we know that he is coming back to take us home. Amen. And that's the one thing, the hope that we have to look forward to is going home with, heaven, with Jesus in heaven to the place that he has prepared for us. Now, how many of you guys would say that you do not want, you see these things happening, you see all of the signs that God has shown us in Matthew 24, you see them going on and you know that it's real, but you want to be ready for his second coming. Amen. 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 If you are visiting with us today, we have a little card in your bulletin. Feel free to fill it out. If you don't have one, raise your hand and one of the deacons will get it out to you. Jesus does not want any of us to be missing from his kingdom. He's, he will leave his sheep of 99 to go look for the one that he is missing. He wants for each and every one of us to be with him in his kingdom. And we all want to be ready for his second coming. Just raise your hand and one of the deacons will get it to you. closing prayer, please. Father God, I thank you that you love us enough to share with us your signs of your second coming. I thank you that you care about us enough, Lord, to go look for the one that is missing, Lord, instead of staying with the 99. Thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for all that you do for us and for never leaving us nor forsaking us, Lord. Please help everybody that in this room to not be missing when you come back for us, Lord. Please help us with our characters, Lord, so that we, they could be like yours. Forgive us our sins and bless us throughout this day. In your name I pray.